Hey guys, Leon Bazin here, and I have something special for you. Oh yeah, the M1 Mac, the M1 Max, the M1 Max MacBook Pro. So let's see how great this is. I'm really excited to test it out. So let's begin. I wanted to speed this up a bit faster because I know you guys want to get to the action as quickly as I do. So just enjoy a little bit of stop motion. So the specs I ordered were the 16 inch M1 Max with the 10 core CPU, the 32 core GPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. My first impressions while holding the laptop was, it's a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. It looks a lot heavier in the pictures, is very sturdy, and feels very rigid at the same time. As usual, Apple, Apple come true with their top notch packaging, with the top notch at the top of the display, and the display itself is very vibrant. I love the keyboard, it's very Apple-esque. So here's a quick comparison between the new MacBook Pro and the 2019 MacBook Pro 15 inch. The new MacBook Pro is definitely heavier, but it feels a lot more sturdier than the older one. As you can see, the older 2019 15 inch is more top heavy in the lid and the newer one is more sturdier all around. Also with the addition of the new ports, you get much more versatility in the project you're working on. Now here we have a 13 inch MacBook Air. As you can tell the size difference, one of the main reasons I went with the 16 inch over the 13 inches, definitely that screen real estate. Uh, the 13 inch doesn't have the wow factor for me. Also, the screen real estate is very important to the work I do. So let's get into some real world usage. So as you can see in Cinema 4D, this is how the notch behaves while in full screen. There's different ways you can customize the notch. I prefer not to have it in full screen mode because the menu bar does this weird thing where it disappears sometimes. I'm not sure how to change that. So what I do is I leave the application like this, the way you see it and just have the menu bar just sit at the top. That way it's easier to visit folders and other stuff you wanna do multitask. Here's a short project made with Dynamics to Cinema 4D that I'm gonna demonstrate the speed of the cache versus my 32 core Threadripper. As you can see, the M1 is much faster than my 32 core machine. But I'll I'll give the Treadripper a little bit of credit that, as you can see, Cinema 4D does not use all of the cores like some other programs out there. Cinema 4D is still single single threaded, I believe, which will make having lower cores and higher clock speed more preferable in Cinema 4D. And as you can see right now, the playback on the M1 chip is much more better than the playback on my AMD Treadripper. So let's do a test. Let's try to compare my multi GPU PC system to my MacBook Pro. To keep this fair, a little bit fair, I would say, is I'll only be using one GPU. As you can see, I have a 3080 Ti and a 2080 Ti. And on another machine, I have a 1080 Ti. So it is water cooled, but I'll be only using one of each. 
So for this benchmark test, I'll be using the 3080 Ti, the 2080 Ti, and the 1080 Ti. All of the projects file will be available for you guys to download yourself. And let me know what machine you're using and what render times did you get. Also keep in mind that all of these tests were done with the laptop still plugged in. I wanted to see how much power the laptop gives at its fullest. It was also pretty cool on the load, to be honest. I was really surprised that I really didn't hear that much fan noise. In this particular render, I noticed something that was a bit strange. The 3080 Ti and the 2080 Ti, the render looks completely different compared to the 1080 Ti and the M1 Max. I'm not sure if the ray tracing had anything to do with it, but, but the output was way off. This kind of makes you think that a lot of the stuff is still in beta. And uh, you be the judge. Uh, I'm not sure if it's only me, but let me know if it happens on your MacBook or PC. Well, to wrap up this review, I would say, I like the size and weight of it. It doesn't bother me much. I like the fact that all the ports returned. It makes you really happy now. <laughs> really happy to have these extra ports on here. Um, the weight's pretty good, not too heavy. I can see myself carrying this around, carry it around like this. In a case, of course, <laughs> as protection. Um, going back to the display, the display is really well. <laughs> it looks really good. The blacks are black. Look, it cannot be. This is one reason I would always say get a 16 inch. Like, once you open it, you always say, wow, that's always my first impression. Despite all of the flashiness and the functionality of the laptop, um, let's get back to performance. From what I see, from what I've seen so far in my testing, my early testing, um, it's kind of disappointing. The only reason I say it's disappointing is the fact that I'm seeing from the test scenes I, I have and what I shared with you guys, um, I'm seeing less than 1080 Ti performance and that's a GPU that came out in 2017. Even though the, Mac, the MacBook uses a integrated GPU, I was expecting a little bit more performance. Maybe it's still too early to tell because it is like the first week or the second week of this being released as of now i know octane is coming out with a new a new updated version for the m1 max also redshift uh, i'm using the latest one which which is the 3.0.59 version so i'm not sure if that's if they're coming out with a better one that's more optimized and improved for the m1 max I'm not sure how it is. So with that being said, I would say something very controversial here. Um, I would recommend you hold off on getting the M1 Max until the GPU rendering software gets updated to meet the demand because um, the performance is not up there yet for this pricing. The pricing is kind of way too high for the performance you're getting right now. I'll do a little more, I'm going to do a little bit more testing between After Effects and do the whole workflow, how seamless it works with the upgraded RAM and stuff like that. But as of now, the raw performance is not to the standard I thought it was going to be. That, that's all. It is what it is. It might get better. But as of now, I won't recommend anyone purchasing any new MacBook because if you get the the M1 Pro is going to be 
50% slower. <laughs> so don't don't try to save money in the pro. It's going to be way more slower than that. And you you always want the fastest results possible. So as of now, hold off on it until probably later this year. I'm not sure. I'll be doing more videos and keep you guys updated with any new features or anything new that comes out there. I have tons of other software to test out such as Houdini, Marvelous Designer, ZBrush, Octane when it comes out. Um, I have tons of Blender when that version comes out. So uh, just stay subscribed and we, we, we're going to get through this together. As always, please like and subscribe. You can buy me a coffee. Project files in the link below and see you guys on the next one.